And once we appoint the judge, the executor, by the plea, by either saying guilty or not guilty, then it's game over. Then effectively we have given the power to the judge to do whatever they want to do. Now, what's the importance of the role of the executor? The pro se cutis makes a series of accusations, but they are not valid. They are not valid until an executor has been appointed and the details of the trust have been validated and all parties with the trust have agreed. When an executor is appointed, those processes take place. But until that executor has taken place, everything that the prosecutor has said is merely presumption, is merely assumption. It is not yet valid. Now, from the date of a writ, a summons, to the date of a hearing may be six days, seven days, 14 days. Normally, it should be 14 days, but I make the observation that I expect the bar to change the way they operate out of desperation, so it may change. It does not matter, except we can use the argument of 14 days as a lever under the executor letters to say, 14 days have taken place, no executor is in place, therefore, Franco Collins appoints Franco Collins the executor of this matter. And as the executor, we want to see some facts. Now, I'm referring to the executor letter, which is located under the uh, section, which is about executor from how to succeed at court, and I'm just calling it up. And here in this letter, which we can put on the back of a summons, a copy of the summons and post in, we can go to the clerk of the courts and have it um, recorded before the court case, usually on the day, and we tell them, appointment of executive, let it be known to all that 14 consecutive days has passed without any executor or administrator being appointed since the above mentioned constructive trust was first formed by form of action, naming our property as beneficiary. So we're telling them a whole number of things. One, we know exactly what's going on. Two, we know they haven't done this because they can't. They cannot do it under their rules and they won't do it under their rules. As we say then, we hereby give formal notice as witness before all heaven and earth that as you and your agents abandon your duties and obligations, a general executor has been appointed duly, uh, has been duly appointed for the above mentioned constructive trust in the form of blah, blah, blah. And then we give them the instructions. First, the one true and only executor of the above mentioned constructive trust hereby orders you to submit in writing within four days a certified copy of your oath for the Office of Clerk of Courts, da, da, da. Now we could do the same for the prosecutor. We could do the same for the prosecutor to say, by what right are you claiming pro se acutus? Now I'll let you all know now that I'm going to add an additional letter here that gives notice to the prosecuting attorney from the hell out of them as to what presumptions are you making your accusations? Because at that point, there is no official constructive trust position that the prosecuting attorney has in order to make those accusations. They are merely accusations by which become valid once the executor is in place, normally the judge. Well, continuing on this letter, which is focusing on the clerk of the courts at this point, second, the one true and only executor of the above mentioned constructive trust hereby orders you to submit in writing within four days the complete and full certified copies of all documents, blah, 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 which is basically saying, let's see the early work where you've already factored in you're going to make money. Now, we tell them if they fail, then we shall be uh, ordering that the matter be dismissed with extreme prejudice. Now, will this stop them playing games? No, it won't stop them playing games. You can't stop 
scorpions from, from stinging. But what you can do is make it known that there is no more hiding behind the magic. We know exactly what they're doing, and we know why they're doing it. That's the most important. We know more than they do about their own laws. And this is the power that is being granted to you now, to know the deepest of reasons of why they do what they do. An awesome power that coincides with the absolute right when you do create an ecclesiastical deed poll, that you are a divine immortal spirit. You do represent the divine, and it's you that's helping restore the law against these criminals. So the executive letter and the executive letter that we'll be producing for the prosecutors now, in light of knowing what a prosecutus is doing, has an important impact in making it even more known before you go to court, before you uh, move forward with the court examples and saying, I am trust recipient number da-da-da, um, and you have no ju jurisdiction over me. That just leaves me a couple more things that I just want to raise about this at the moment, and I hope you are all finding this important and helpful. And I, I feel it is very important and very helpful. I want to talk quickly about, and this is one that will be improving. We don't have a lot of information yet, but we're improving it. The link that says attendance. And I just want to talk about attendance because I understand the difficulty from going from theory to practice. It's great to talk about this in theory. It's another, another thing entirely to go to the courts, and in 15 minutes, it's like all over. As I've said to you, please, don't go to court with your head full of things that you want to say. Don't make it a, 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 a tub speech. Learn this, train this, talk to people, test it out. But when you go to court, understand you have every right not to consent. If they force you, then you may comply, but under duress. So make it known. You have every right to object to any trickery before you. Every right. It is your word and your consent that makes what they do valid. So use that very carefully. Do not allow them to use their trickery of presumptions against you. But when you attend court, remember, you're attending, not appearing. You're attending, Latin, attendere, to direct the attention to give notice. You are only attending, one, so that there can be no presumption that you're in dishonour. In other words, they can't use the thing they want to do. These people don't want you to come to court. If they get wind that you have knowledge, they don't want you to go to court. Why would they want a competent person to go to court? They want to trick you into not going to court. They want to trick you so they can claim you're in dishonour. But when you attend court, you are there for one thing and one thing only beyond an honour, that is to clean up any controversy and have the matter dismissed. You are not there to bear witness to them saying, well, we'll hold over the matter, we'll defer the matter to another date. Don't let a judge play that game. The judges have actually played this game for a number of you too often. No, you have no jurisdiction. You haven't proven to me the jurisdiction. I am the executor. You are not. You are not holding any official role at all. The only role you're holding is the presumption. And I'm here to clean up that presumption, prove it false, have the matter dismissed with extreme prejudice. But I'm telling you the matter is to be dismissed with extreme prejudice. Unless you can prove to me your jurisdiction here this instant, do not let them play the games that they wish to play. Stay in honour, don't be rude, don't be aggressive, don't allow these people any wriggle room at all, shut it down, dismiss the case, get on with your life. Now, a number of you will face bully judges, and I write it here again, bully judges that, that are basically poker players, where they will ignore everything you say on the presumption that you will cave in because they're extreme bullies. Do not be intimidated by bully judges. 
stand your ground. I do not plea. I motion for the matter to be dismissed with extreme prejudice. I object. I do not consent. You have no jurisdiction. I demur. I appeal. Every Everything that you have to respond to those bully judges, but do not allow bully judges to cave in. Now, yes, judges, when you go into their realm, have the ability to kidnap you. But it is not a lawful act. The judge says, well, I'll hold you over. You can say, you know, you, you have the ability to kidnap me. Absolutely. I see these people armed in your court and you can move to kidnap the flesh any time you like, but it is not a lawful act. I do not consent. And you have no right, no authority or right to do so. And it will be noted on the record and it will be subject to appeal and I will use everything in my power to ensure that because you have exceeded the powers of your office, that under appeal... It is recorded what you've done. Do not let these bully judges intimidate you. Well, knowing the foundation of their law and the corrupt foundation of their law, knowing the connection between trust, knowing the fact that we are the ones that have the power, not them, and that everything is in reverse. They make us believe they hold the power and we are meaningless and worthless. It's the complete opposite. When you know who you are, when you know how their law works, when you know that you represent the law and they do not, then you hold all the power. Please remember who you are. And please know that in spite of the intimidation, in spite of the challenges, this time, this moment, and all of you are called to help end a system that has lasted for far too long. As bad as you feel, remember, these people have never been held to account for hundreds of years. Hundreds of years, these private guilds have practised their corruption without being challenged until now. This is the end of their system. Hold the ground. Know who you are and bring it to an end. It can only be brought to an end when you are competent and in honour and remain true. Please. Now in the time remaining, I want to talk about the bigger picture about world events and I want to talk about IDs. So let's, let's talk about IDs because that's an administrative area and then we'll talk about the bigger picture. The trust IDs are an important part of the overall framework of, of tools. But I want to make something, an important issue, very, very clear because it's something that we miss and for people who are new, it's something that gets missed if we don't talk about it. The most important validation in our system is the great registers. That is, we say that every transaction, every important transaction is recorded and the provenance, that's the history of transactions, are recorded in the great registers. So the great register becomes the validation and the truth that something is what it says it is. If it is recorded and has a history, then it is valid. As a consequence, we don't place a great deal of emphasis on paper, ordinary paper, other than a custom because we are used to paper being a way of saying, look, here's a certificate, here's a, 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 an abstract, here's something that looks official. Because we're image trained that way, we don't go against that because it's ingrained in us and we say that's fine. If you want to see a certificate of a supreme credit, even though all the supreme credits that the societies will ever need for the next 1,000 years, 144 million of them already have been created, 